Yo, what's up, YouTube? Man, it's your boy, Action Jackson. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about how the Dallas Cowboys are bringing back both uh, uh, defensive quarter Dan Quinn and our head coach, Mike McCarthy. Again, before we hop into the video, uh, I'm not really a big fan of this move. So, of course, you guys already know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, um, share the video with anyone who you think will enjoy my content, man. So, I already said before in the intro, I'm not really a big fan of us bringing back Mike McCarthy. Uh, the reason being is that uh, he hasn't been prepared at all in these playoff games. Uh, he wasn't prepared the first time we played the Niners. He wasn't prepared the second time we played the Niners. Uh, I didn't help. We didn't, we didn't have any talent going into the second time playing against the Niners, but I believe we still had enough to beat the Niners. Um, uh, we're, we're very slow in the playoff games. Going into those playoff games, we can't really uh, start off fast and efficient. Uh, we can't run the football uh, in those games, in the playoffs, and then uh, defensively, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. We play in these dying packages where we have six or seven DBs on the field, and we're too light of a football team uh, to be stopping the run. Um, because as soon as a team, all they want to do is just run the ball. They already got us because we got linebackers who weigh two ten, two oh five. And then we have a linebacker who just came, you know, off of a very big uh, major injury in college. And Damone Clark, if he's ever really got his feet up underneath him to go to come back and play. And then, uh, you know, you have DeMarvion Overshone coming in next year. That still doesn't stop me from wanting to drop the linebacker, but you don't really know how these players turn to be after dealing with a serious injury like that with their ACL. So uh, just because we're bringing back these two guys, I already talked about how I felt about these guys and um, how in ways we cannot win with this group. But now we're going to find new ways to win, right? So offensively, I'm going to talk about in ways we got to win. And it starts off with Dan Quinn knowing, not Dan Quinn, my bad, but Mike McCarthy knowing who Dak Prescott is. Dak Prescott is a really, really good quarterback. He's a top 10 quarterback, but he's not top five. He's not top three. He's not, um, you know, a Pat Mahomes, Josh Allen, uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, Joe Burrow type of quarterback. He's not one of those guys, and he's not a guy that, you know, you trust him with no run game and uh, bad defense. He can keep scoring touchdowns each and every time he touches that ball. That's just not who he is, and Mike McCarthy has to understand that. All righty, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to put all the weapons around him, but most importantly, we have to get this run game going. So uh, two ways to fix your run game is that you're going to have to get a better running back and um, I'm saying you should be able to do that with your uh, draft picks. If not a draft pick, I believe you should be doing that with your uh, a guy in free agency. Now, a guy in free agency, I'm kind of eyeing right now. I'm eyeing it down to three people, Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, and uh, Derrick Henry. Those are the three guys that I would like for the Dallas Cowboys. One of the, pick one of those three to come in, fill in the role of your uh, wide receiver, you know, your running back one role. And I'm really more inclined to go with Josh Jacobs. The running back market is trash right now, and I think you can be able to bring in a guy like Josh Jacobs or Saquon because the reason why I want one of those two to be a Dallas Cowboys is because I think that they would be able to run the ball uh, east, west, north, and south, but also they can catch the water in the backfield. And um, we need that in this offensive back that where, you know, if they're crowding the line of scrimmage or they're locking up our wide receivers, we can dump it off to Saquon, we can dump it off to Jacobs, they can make somebody miss or run somebody over and uh, keep the chains moving. I think that's what we need in this offense. And uh, second, we need to get younger and stronger at the offensive line. I'm fine with Zach Martin for a couple more years, but uh, we have his replacement in uh, TJ Bass, Terrence Steele. Hopefully next year he can come in um, with his legs under him and a full year removed from the ACL injury. He'll be back to his run dominant self and being solid in pass protection. And Tyler Smith coming back. Uh, as an all pro, this is going to be his third year in the league. He's going to be fine. He's going to be great. I think he's going to be your next uh, offensive guard for the next 10 years. So uh, next year, technically on the roster, you don't have a center and you don't have a tackle. If you're not going to spend high draft capital on an offensive tackle, go out there and resign Tyron Smith to a year deal, two year deal, bring him back. And hopefully that with bringing Tyron Smith back, uh, Austin Richards is ready to play as well because we already know 
that Tyron Smith is going to miss anywhere from four to six games. So a few games and a few spots, we're going to have to rely on Austin Richards. So it makes sense that the Dallas Cowboys get him ready to play and that if we're not going to spend high draft capital on offensive tackle, uh, bring back Tyron Smith if he wants to play. If Tyron Smith don't want to play, then that changes the uh, trajectory of the Dallas Cowboys and the draft picks. Uh, so that means we're going to have to possibly spend a day one or a day two pick on an offensive tackle if Tyron Smith does not want to come back. Um, center. I'm fine with drafting the center right now. I'm not really too familiarized right now with the centers, but give me some time right around February, March. I'm going to be uh, ingrained with some of the names with the uh, offensive linemen, most of these players that can come in and help the Dallas Cowboys win football games. So the Cowboys are going to have to do right now is uh, draft a center. Uh, I know I, ha- I heard a familiar name, uh, the center out of Oregon. His name is like uh, Jackson Johnson something. He's one of those uh, good centers out of Oregon. Hopefully that we can bring him in and uh, we can draft him possibly with our day two pick because um, first round I'm open to either D-end, uh, D-end offensive tackle, wide receiver, quarterback, Running back, if he's uh, really that great, he can change your dynamic of your offense. And a really great linebacker, if we need to draft a linebacker in the first round. But another receiver opposite of Seed Lamb, because nine or eight games this year for going down the list, twice when we played Philadelphia, when we played the Jets, when we played the Chargers, when we played the Seattle Seahawks, uh, the Detroit Lions, the Miami Dolphins. Who else, guys? Uh, week 18 versus Washington, twice against Washington, actually, actually. So about those nine games, 10 games over our 12 wins, we've been asking Dak Prescott and uh, C.D. Lamb to carry us offensively. Sure, we can't do that. If we're going to turn around and throw the ball a couple of more times, um, we need to get a real wide receiver, two in the building. Um, again, Keon Cole, Coleman out of uh, Florida State is a really great wide receiver. I believe he's like 6'4". He's an athlete. He's like a 4-3-4-4 wide receiver. If he can go in and play wide receiver two for the Dallas Cowboys, that would be tremendous, and he can open things up at that wide receiver two spot. Brandon Cooks didn't bring out the best and uh, the wide receivers, but not, but not bring out the best. He just wasn't the best receiver that we wanted him to be coming into the season. He wasn't that 1,000-yard uh, receiver, but that's mainly because of the Dallas Cowboys, and we didn't get him going until late into the season. Uh, he, he showed up in some of our uh, good games and our great games that we needed him. He did pop up. But um, next year, we do have him on the roster. And I feel like him being our wide receiver three will be a lot better than Michael Gallup. And like I said, we have to bring in another wide receiver because if uh, C. Lamb wants to be pouting in the first two drives of the, of the game, that's fine. Keep running your routes. We're going to have this wide receiver two go in and go t- take care of your job. So I think that's what we also need to do. And the Dallas Cowboys have to get it going with Luke Schoonmaker. I'm not happy with the front office of that selection. I'm not mad at Luke Schoonmaker himself. Again, I'm mad at what the front office did by selecting him. Next year, he needs to be a hell of a tight end, too. Um, I think he needs to step in. He needs to be uh, your second best tight end. He needs to be. He needs to bring more to that room outside of Jake Ferguson. Drake. Jake Ferguson is a hell of a tight end. I really love him. He's one of my favorite players on the team. But we need a tight end, too, that can go out there so also we can run a lot of 12 personnel or 21 personnel, you know, with two tight ends, uh, one running back, or, you know, 22 personnel if we're going to go out there with two running backs, a fullback, and a running back, and two tight ends, and then a wide receiver. We can still go out there and still be effective no matter what sort of formation that we're in. So we got to make sure that Luke Schoonmaker is a – is a great wide receiver threat next season. So that's about it for the offensive side of the football. Again, you need to get better in run game. You need to find you a better running back. So get younger at the offensive line, uh, replace Tyler Biotish, figure out what you're going to do with Tyron Smith, get you a better better running back. Luke Schoonmaker needs to figure out how great he wants to be and how great he can be. Uh, fourth, we need to find a wide receiver, a true wide receiver too, opposite of C.D. Lamb, in case C.D. Lamb is bracketed all day and he and he wants to be out of the game because of an attitude problem or whatever the case might be, bad mojo, bad energy, bad body language, we can get a, we can get a wide receiver too that can go in there and go take care of business. Defensively, um, we need a linebacker. I'm not going to keep discussing it. We need a linebacker really bad. Again, DeMarvin Overshone, as great as he's 
flashed out in the preseason last year and in training camp. He's not stopping me from getting uh, some of the best linebackers coming out of next year's draft class, like Jeremy Trotter out of uh, Clemson. Uh, he's not going to stop me from getting a guy like that. Uh, also, um, we need to add another defensive tackle to this team. I understand Mozzie Smith isn't ready right now, but we need to add another defensive tackle. I'm fine with bringing back uh, Jonathan Hankins. But again, we need another defensive tackle that can help stop the run. Um, I don't mind going out there in free agency and signing some nose tackles to add depth to this defensive tackle room. But we need to slow down that run game. And uh, we can't have teams running the ball on us because that just is killing us year in and year out because we just can't stop the run. And we don't have linebackers that can diagnose plays and be in the backfield and tear things up, man. We need a true uh, quarterback of this defense, and I think that's where it starts with linebacker. And we're always being brought up in the conversation of the San Francisco uh, 49ers defense, the Baltimore Ravens defense. We're not, we'll never be as great as those defenses because those two defenses, linebackers that can play, and they they watch film, they understand, they read their eye, you know, they read with their eyes, they understand how to diagnose plays, they understand every single formation set. They know their, uh, know their opponents like the back of their hand, and that's what we need in our linebackers. Uh, another thing we need to do, we need to add an edge defender. We need to add a guy that can play opposite of DeMarcus Lawrence. So that's why we can have Micah play linebacker. I want Micah playing linebacker in a role in which he played his rookie year. Micah Parsons was the best football player in America that year when he was a pass rushing middle linebacker. He has shown that he's one of the best linebackers or one of the best pass rushers when he's uh, facing over the guard or center position. So we need him playing that position because that's where you're going to get the best of Michael Parsons. and He's going to be great rushing from that stance. Again, he's not a true edge defender because what we're doing is that if he's not great in the run game also, but two, he's too easy to take away. And too many teams are running directly at Micah in these games when he's just playing strictly D and you're just erasing your best player off I, you know, out of the game plan, you're, you're, you know, you're erasing him out of the game by just strictly having him at edge. He's not that type of player where you can solidify him and hold him into one position. He's, he needs to be all over the field making plays and being lined up every single space that he can. Put him at safety. Put him at linebacker. Put him wherever. Just put him where in a spot in which he can help us win football games. That's what we got Michael Parsons for. Figure it out. And one last thing we need to figure out is get another corner. I understand we have. Deron Bland, Jordan Lewis, uh, Trayvon Diggs all coming back. But again, I'm not too confident with Trayvon Diggs coming back. His first year coming, his, his very first year coming off of that ACL injury. Again, an ACL takes two years to recover. One full year for you to, to recover and get back on the football field. The second year for you to fully regenerate and you to, to come back in a form. That's what we need right now with uh, this team. We need to draft another line, uh, draft another corner until he's ready and things of that nature, man. So again, offensively, if we're going to be running, running it back with these two coaches, we need to have a great running game, a great running back. And uh, we need Luke Schoolmaker to uh, step it up at tight end two. We need another receiver to step up outside of CeeDee Lamb. And then five, we need to understand who Dak Prescott is and understand that he can't win you football games with no running game and no defense that's playing trash. If we're keeping Dan Quinn, uh, you have to get out of that dime package. We can't be playing with 10 linebackers. Get you Bobby Wagner. Still draft you another young linebacker. Uh, get another defensive tackle that can help you stop the run and generate pass rush up the middle. Get you another edge defender outside of uh, Demarcus Lawrence. So that's where we can have a true edge that can stop the run and pass rush. So that's where we can move Micah back to linebacker for him to be the best uh, defensive player in the league. And then we need to add another corner because – I'm not so sure of this line of this cornerback room when Trevon Diggs comes back because it'll be his first full year coming back from an ACL injury, and it takes you two years to fully recover and for you to get back to the player that you normally were before you tore your ACL. That's about it for the video. Hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe, stay blessed. Bye.